Right now, the Columbia County DA says officers involved in a chase turned into a fatal crash will not face charges. And a suspected drunk driver trying to speed away from police ends up crashing into a middle school. More on the charges he is facing. Plus, we're asking political science experts about Edgewood High School's lawsuit against the city of Madison alleging religious discrimination. His analysis on the strength of their case. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 6. And we start with breaking news into the Channel 3000 Alert Center. The State Department of Justice has hired a special prosecutor now to continue an investigation into the Richland Center Police Chief Lucas Clements. This comes after the Department of Criminal Investigation finished its portion of the investigation. The state began investigating Clements in June, though officials would not say what wrongdoing is being investigated. Clements has been on paid administrative leave since then. Mayor Mike Kaufman told News 3 Now he does not know what's going on with that investigation, but the city is supposed to get an update in several weeks. Also breaking tonight, the man accused of firing a gun inside Vision's nightclub on Madison's east side has been found guilty of all of the charges he faces. 35-year-old Cole Foster was found guilty of first-degree reckless injury and three counts of recklessly endangering safety, all felonies. He was also found guilty of carrying a handgun while drinking alcohol and disorderly conduct. Foster's attorneys had previously argued he did not fire every shot inside the nightclub and that his actions were in self-defense after he was stabbed at that nightclub. Three people were shot during that incident and the fourth suffered a graze wound. Officers who engaged in a high-speed chase that ended in the death of two suspects will not face charges. And that's according to the Columbia County District Attorney. Amy Reed joins us now to explain what went into that decision. Amy? Let's go back to late April. The Columbia County Sheriff's Office finds a car that they believe is tied to a northern Wisconsin kidnapping right here in Columbia County. They, when they go to stop it, it turns into a high-speed pursuit that ends right back here at the I-39-9094 interchange. The car the Sheriff's Office was after ran over spike strips immediately after and then rammed into a semi-truck. That killed the driver and his passenger, brothers Terrence and Teron Simmons. The State Department of Justice released the Columbia County DA's report today that ruled the officers acted appropriately here. She said the driver was using a stolen vehicle while armed after committing violent crimes and by engaging officers in a high-speed pursuit, it endangered everyone, including his own brother. She also said this put officers in a difficult position, but ultimately she said they did the reasonable thing. As a result, she won't pursue criminal charges. We talked with law enforcement today about what goes through their minds when they have to make this decision, and they said it's not an easy one to make. We'll show, share more about what they have to say on that tonight at News 3 Now at 10. Amy, thank you so much. Less than two weeks before the first day of school, Beaver Dam Middle School has to clean up more than $100,000 in estimated damages after a suspected drunk driver crashed into it. Around 1140 last night, a 22 year old man was speeding away from police and crashed into the school. The woman he was living with reported the two had a verbal argument and then he broke a window and drove off drunk. District officials say he also hit an electrical transformer, which caused the fire you saw in those images. The crash also sparked that fire, causing even more damages. The suspect, Roy Cortez, was arrested. He faces a felony charge of fleeing an officer causing property damage. Court records show his bond was set at $10,000. To weather now, clear sunny skies. They'll stick around the rest of the week. Let's check in with your first alert forecast. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary. Eric, temperatures will be very comfortable, too, in the mid to upper 70s by day and at nighttime, those low temperatures dropping into the middle 50s. Visible cloud track shows more clouds in northern and central Wisconsin than we saw here in southern Wisconsin. Those clouds are starting to dissipate, and there's really no precipitation showing up other than a couple of sprinkles in east central Wisconsin that died out over the last hour or so. Temperatures right now are in the 70s from Madison on toward the south and west. To the north and east, it's a little cooler. Temperatures are in the mid to upper 60s thanks to a lake breeze and a little more cloud cover there, but dew point temperatures are in the lower to middle 50s, meaning the air is very comfortable. By morning, temperatures will be down in the middle 50s with mostly clear skies developing overnight. Tomorrow, look for sunny skies and a pleasant high of 76. That's your News 3 Now First Alert forecast. Gary, thank you so much. Fitchburg police are asking the public to identify a man caught on multiple home surveillance videos in connection to a string of burglaries. This happened around 2.30 Tuesday morning in the neighborhood near McKee Farms Park. 
Police say the man appears to have dark shoulder length hair that's pulled back. You can see the picture right there and a tattoo on his left forearm. If you recognize him, you're asked to call Fitchburg Police. Tonight, we're taking a closer look at the arguments Edgewood High School is making in a federal lawsuit. Edgewood is alleging the city of Madison is discriminating against the school based on its religion. Rose Schmidt joins us live from the stadium to explain this controversy. Rose? Yes, the core battle centers over what Edgewood can use this field for. As you can see, JV now playing a game behind us. The school's master plan says it would use the field for practices and classes, but does not mention games. Edgewood's lawsuit appeals the zoning board's decision and alleges that these restrictions are only being placed on them and not on UW or any public high schools. Edgewood also claims it's being treated differently because it's a Catholic school. Political science professor Howard Schwaber says religious discrimination is a weaker argument to make, but as a whole, he believes Edgewood has a case because the other arguments are strong. It does seem unreasonable uh, and arbitrary for the city of Madison to say to Edgewood, you can't use your playing fields to have games. Um, and it would certainly be unfair if other colleges are allowed to use their fields for purposes and Edgewood is not. Edgewood issued a statement today saying it's still reviewing all options to ensure its students are being treated equally to students at public schools. The school also says it's hopeful Madison Common Council will pass the ordinance repealing Edgewood's master plan next month, but filed the lawsuit in case that doesn't happen. Mayor Satya Rhodes-Conway withdrew her support from that ordinance this week, but refused to answer questions about it today. Back to you. Rose Schmidt, live at Edgewood Rose, thank you. And new at 6, Milwaukee veterinarians and shelters are seeing a spike in a deadly dog virus. There have been 15 reported cases of parvovirus within the past month. It's passed through feces from one dog to another, affecting internal organs to the point where they can shut down. Puppies and older dogs who are not up to date on vaccines are most at risk. Madison Mayor Satya Rhodes-Conway and the city's engineering division have officially flipped the switch on a new solar array at Goodman Park's maintenance facility. The solar panels will generate 35% of the power needed for that building. This is the 23rd building that the city of Madison has equipped with solar panels in partnership with Focus on Energy. The mayor is looking forward to more. Madison Gas and Electric and ride sharing company Lyft are offering a $500 bonus to Madison area electric vehicle owners who sign up to be drivers. The partnership hopes to reduce carbon emissions and raise awareness about the benefits of electric cars, including no, oh, no oil changes or trips to the gas station. You can sign up at mgne.com slash lift. Wisconsin's largest technology and entrepreneurship festival starts today. It is dedicated to helping people beginning in business connect with those who are professionals in it. The eight day long Forward Fest hosts 56 events at different venues across Madison, all of which are focused on bettering technology and startup opportunities. Entrepreneurs can pitch business ideas to professionals and receive mentorship from Madison area businesses. So what the festival at large does is provide a canvas, an eight day canvas for folks, for different groups to host events. And the idea is that you know, one week out of the year, everybody sort of has their silos that they sort of operate in. We break down those silos and give everybody a chance to see what everybody else is doing. The uncle says the fest is a way to see what fast growing businesses are doing and what he calls the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Most of the events are free. All are open to the public. Next at six, we are learning about a festival that couldn't get much more Wisconsin because it involves chucking cow dung as far as possible. There's actually a science behind how those chunks are chosen. And more, more local news ahead. Business owners are struggling to get foot traffic because of construction blocking access to their stores. What steps they wish the city would have taken before that project. That's tonight on News 3 Now at 10.
Welcome back. East High School's Athletics Department is asking for your help to cover the cost of fieldhouse renovations. The project costs $3.2 million. It will add amenities to Milton McPike Fieldhouse, like a new entryway to the school and enough bleachers for all 1,700 students at once. Now, so far, between district funding and donations, the project's still a quarter million dollars short. But East High School is up for the State Farm Neighborhood Assist Grant worth $25,000. The amount of pride in the community that this new space will bring has really uh, trickled down to our students to where they're holding their heads a little bit higher now, knowing that this brand new, you know, $3.2 million facility is going to be theirs at their home. So here's how you can help. Voting for the State Farm Grant ends tomorrow. We have a link up at channel3000.com. The school will still be collecting donations after that grant is awarded. A week from tomorrow is the start of the 45th annual Cow Chip Throwing Festival in Sauk Prairie. About 40,000 people go for the entertainment of watching people throw dried cow dung as far as they possibly can. And News 3 Now's Jamie Perez wanted to dig into the science of how the cow chips are chosen. I'm a farmer. I know what cow chips smell like. Russell Balwig knows the perfect cow chip when he sees one. This one ain't too bad either. He has to pick about three to four hundred of these every year for the annual cow chip throwing festival. They're throwing cow poo. Wouldn't be my first choice, but a solid number two. These are some of the nicest ones we've gotten all year. You might think that they can just pick any old cow chip for people to throw. But there is a science behind this. Ooh, I think it's going to be a little soft, though. A solid explanation. And we just can't hold it in. Needs to be fairly thick, dense, and you like them probably eight inches, ten inches around would make a very nice cow chip. The ones they pick have to be just right. Pick them up like that. They have to come from specific cows. They don't get any corn because they have to have grass, which is a lot of fiber, which makes the chips stick together. They have to be dry enough to throw like a Frisbee. Throw them a long ways, people do, 200 and some feet. Not too soft. And here you see how dark it is. That is way too wet to be able to pick up. But enough to be able to dry in time for the festival. This is really nice and thick, nice density to it. And it might even have a, it's, you know, it's a little oblong, but then some people like that for a handle that you can throw it like a Frisbee. You might think that this is not the job for you, oh. but for Russell. We tell people they can lick their fingers if they want to, but not too many people do that. His passion for it is explosive. That's, I think it's really unique because it's just something different that it's very few people in the United States or the world that actually do this. And now you know where the perfect cow chips come from. So that's what we do. In Sauk City. This one's going to be kind of soft for the year, but it should dry out really nice, and we just use it for next year. Jamie Perez, News 3 Now. The truck's going to be full. Well, ain't that some chip right there. If you would like to get in on the fun, it's only a dollar to attend. A link for more information about the festival is on our website, channel3000.com. And it should be a beautiful weekend to toss cow chips sure. or do whatever else you're looking <laughs> to do outdoors. Sunny, clear skies. They're on repeat the next few days. Gary Zip with your forecast after the break.
We are sharing a call for action tonight that shows just how far scammers are willing to go to get at your money. Our Leah Linscheid has the details. You might be used to hearing about all the different kinds of scams that come into your email box, but two teachers from Janesville are sounding the alarm about fraud that came in the form of a text message from their boss. Sherry Gonterman says when her principal emailed her, asking her to text her about a gift card she needed, she didn't think twice. She bought that $200 gift card, then sent her a picture of the back of it. Turns out she and another teacher had fallen for a scam out of Kansas that left them out $400. Teachers are known to be kind people, and for someone to target teachers, it's, it's just appalling to me. We're starting to hit, hit it where it really hurts us, in our pocketbooks, but also with our children. That right there is Barb, our head Call for Action volunteer here at News 3 Now. She's one of a half dozen hardworking folks who use their decades of experience in different fields to help protect you from these kinds of scams. We're getting her take on this scam and how you can spot it should it happen to you. That's coming up tonight on News 3 Now at 10. And of course, if you've been a victim of a scam like this, or maybe you have another consumer question or complaint, you can reach out to the Call for Action volunteers at the number right there on your screen, 270-2833. They are here Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 11 until 1. All right, Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti joining us now. You know, this forecast, were you just sitting in there watching the Cubs today? I mean, this, this couldn't have been too You know, hard it's, it's funny. I didn't, I didn't even check the score until the game was almost <laughs> over. I was at the game last night. They won 11, 12 to 11. Today, they won 1 to nothing. So Weather is much yeah. work right yeah. now. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's nice. You know, I wish we could save some of these days. <laughs> Next year, the Cubs and the Brewers open up in March. It'd be nice to have weather like this then. Well, you can see today we had sunshine through much of southern Wisconsin. A few clouds popped up. There were more clouds up in central and northeastern Wisconsin. That held temperatures down a bit there. But you can see on Doppler track, a couple of sprinkles over eastern Wisconsin. Those have fizzled out, and that's pretty much it. So not looking for any rain for tonight and pretty much for the next few days, all the way through Sunday. Live view from the WISC sky cam showing sky starting to clear out. We've had those cumulus clouds build up, but now that we're getting closer to sunset, you can see those clouds starting to uh, work their way down already. The uh, live view from the Edgewater Sky Camp showing partly sunny skies. High today 76, low temperature 53, just the shade below the average high of 79 and the low of 58. And that's mainly because the nighttime low temperatures are coming down thanks to seeing the air being much drier than it's been recently. 73, the current temperature winds out of the northeast at 10 miles per hour. That dew point temperature at 53 with lighter winds for tonight. That's a pretty good indication as to how cool we get uh, at night. Last night, temperatures were in the 40s up in much of the UP of Michigan and northeastern Wisconsin, around 50 in central Wisconsin, lower 50s here. Milwaukee was at 64, but they had a little more cloud cover uh, through uh, much of the evening uh, before those skies started to clear out. And you can see current temperatures now range from the 60s in northeast Wisconsin, where there has been a little more cloud cover today to the mid to upper 70s through southern and western Wisconsin. But out to the west, those temperatures staying in the 70s, that's a good sign because that's the kind of weather heading in our direction. This is also a sign for pleasant weather, too. When you see those dew point temperatures in the 40s and 50s, that means the air is pretty dry. So it cools off quickly at night, but warms up pretty nicely during the daytime temp uh, during the day. Uh, dew point temperatures are in the 60s from like central Illinois southward. And on weather track, our upper level winds now coming in from the north and northwest. So that's just bringing down fresh Canadian air uh, to the south. Showers and thunderstorms still remain around uh, St. Louis and areas to the south in the vicinity of a stationary front. That's the dividing line between a little more summer-like air where temperatures are in the 80s and uh, to the more comfortable conditions with temperatures in the 70s and 60s to the north. That also blocks the humidity from co coming northwards. So the dew point temperatures are in the upper 60s south of the front. North of the front, though, that air really dries out and makes it very comfortable. So overnight, look for skies to become mostly clear. It'll be comfortable. Low temperature dropping to 54. For tomorrow, a mostly sunny and pleasant day. High temperature 76 degrees and future track well, the trend is nice uh, you don't see any rain in the forecast 54 for the overnight low temperature high temperatures tomorrow mid 70s tomorrow night those temperatures dropping back into the middle 50s and look for high temperatures in the upper 70s for saturday and as we check out the 7 to 10 day forecast upper 70s for sunday shower and thunderstorm chance returns monday with a high of 80 uh, chance of a shower and thunderstorm tuesday and a slight chance wednesday and then after a thunderstorm chance friday it looks like the labor day weekend will be very nice Aaron Rodgers is the game time decision for the Packers tonight as they face the Raiders in Winnipeg. We'll get offensive with number 12 coming up next.
The Packers and Raiders doing field maintenance right now. Investors Group Field in Winnipeg is set up differently because the Canadian football dimensions are different than the NFL. There was an uneven patch in an end zone where the uprights had to be moved and the field had to be patched. But the game is on. Aaron Rodgers, a game time decision tonight. He's been dealing with a stiff back. Any playing time tonight will be limited, but he likes where the offense is, whether he plays any preseason games or not. There's different periods that we're working on where we're doing some tempo stuff. We have a no huddle package in. You know, I think we're doing some uh, some really fun stuff uh, with our installs. And that's when the offense starts to get exciting. As you can see, the possibilities within the scheme that we've put in. And so I really like the way we've practiced, uh, especially the last three days I've been at practice. The Wisconsin football team's getting ready for game week. They'll practice Friday, have an off day Saturday, then start game week a day early on Sunday because they open next Friday at South Florida. Head coach Paul Christ told us, you have an idea of the opposition's personnel, but there's an adjustment aspect, and you have to prepare for the great unknown. I think you, it helps you a little bit in camp. You're trying to do a lot of things to get ready for the season. And so you end up doing a number of different things. So you then have the ability to maybe pull when you're talking about an, an in-game adjustment or maybe you're working on it and just, okay, if, if this were to happen, then we need to go to this. But there's no doubt that you're going to be, you'll be adjusting a little bit. The Brewers off tonight. After last night's rain-shortened win against the Cardinals, they'll host the Diamondbacks for the weekend. At the moment, they sit four games back in the NL Central. Giants manager Bruce Bochy retiring after this season. Cubs giving him the old number 15 for trying to give him an L at Wrigley this afternoon. Kyle Hendricks pitching like he had somewhere to be in a hurry. Seven innings, three hits, no runs, seven strikeouts for Hendricks. The Cubs had two hits in the game. This was one of them. Anthony Rizzo. A productive RBI single to center scores Jason Hayward. Rowan Wick would come in and close the door. Cubs win 1 0, sweeping the Giants, earning their fifth straight win. Well, golf, first round, tour championship in Atlanta. Justin Thomas won the BMW last week. This is how you read greens. Start that ball. That's very good. He's at 10 under par. Brooks Kepka, maybe the most talented player in the world right now. And this is how you approach. That would be a birdie. He is also 10 under, as is Xander Shoffley. Well, last season, Wanaki knocked off Monona Grove in the state quarterfinals 33-7. Don't think the Silver Eagles haven't been counting the days until revenge. They want it tomorrow, and they want it on Wanaki's home turf. That's how we kick off the 2019 high school football season, the 12th year of the Prep Mania High School Football Game of the Week. MG and the key, Jay Wilson, Bill Brophy, Alan Minnert have the booth on channel3000.com tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, and then Melissa Kim will join me on News 3 Now at 10 for Prep Mania. The summer is officially over. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Yeah. Wah, wah. <laughs> yeah. It is a, you know it's coming. It's like the locomotive. And then, yeah. So we call the baseball season over, too, and just, you know, leave the Hey, I'm down. Hey, I'm Not getting on the train. Man, they're just getting started. <laughs> well, no, if they, if we, if we, Cancel it now, you know. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Just stop Penalty it down. math, I like it. <laughs> yeah, right. You know what? Don't, don't stop this nice weather now, though. Yeah, Please. this is no, this going. is perfect. Temperatures upper 60s to the lower 70s and dew point temperatures in the 50s. Lots of sunshine in the next few days and next chance of rain probably Monday. All right. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back here at 10.